Today, we're gonna to change out a frost proof. Frost proofs are something that they normally end up leaking because somebody's cranked them down way too tight too many times when they should have just changed the washer, or there's actually a chip in the seat that's built into the back of the frost proof where the rubber washer seals off. So today we're gonna change this one out. This video is sponsored by Ferguson. Now remember, we teamed up with the people at Ferguson and Ferguson has sponsored this video, so thank you so much. We love what they're doing for the plumbers, for the trades, and for the communities. Go check out ferguson.com or go to the Ferguson Facebook page to learn more about the community. Now we're gonna get started here. Now this frost proof has been leaking. We've got it tightened down to where it's not leaking right now but we wanna go ahead and change it out. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is turn the water off, but I'm gonna go ahead and chip out around here to look at it. Frost proofs in Texas are normally either threaded in or soldered in. So we wanna open it up to look and see, is this just a threaded joint or are we gonna have to open up more of the brick and mortar, the wall inside in order to solder or are we gonna be able to just unthread it and change it out? So anyway, let's get started. Now. I've got a couple of little chisels here. What I wanna do, I'm really trying to take out as little bit of the mortar as I can. You know that I've got gloves on, you see I've got safety glasses on. We're trying to do this as safe as possible and get in there to see what kind of problem we've got. Now it looks like this one's been changed out before because we've got some caulk in here, not just mortar all the way up under it. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go turn the water off because now we're ready to get a wrench on here and unthread it. We can see that it's moving around, so we know that we've got all the mortar off, we've got it loose enough that we can unthread it. Now, we've got a spot here where we can look back in here and we can actually see that it's threaded in. We'll try and get a camera in here. I don't know that we'll be able to see in there because it's quite a ways back and it's dark, but we can tell that this frost proof is actually screwed in. So the good thing is all we're gonna have to do is replace this little bit of mortar and we're gonna be okay. All right guys, so as you see, I went to the back where there's another frost proof at the same level turned it on to drain it down. That way it's not wet where I'm working. Also went to the kitchen sink and opened up the cold water. That way it would drain anything down there. So we've got all the water out of it. We've got everything loose here. Really, all we've got to do is unthread it now. That way we can get the old one out and the new one in. And yes, I live in Dallas, Texas. Now, when I first start off, I like to get a pair of pliers, crescent, anything I can get on there to actually help me break this thing loose. Now, this one wasn't in too tight. Actually, it's turning by hand now. You see, these have a vacuum breaker on it because here in Texas, we have to. And looky there. So this is a typical four inch frost proof. Now, luckily, we stock our vans very well. We know that we have all the sizes. We can look back in here. Everything looks good. What we're gonna do is just replace this with a new one and be good to go. Now, if this hadn't been tightened down so much, we would think about taking it apart and rebuilding it. But to be honest, when we do that, we tell people we can't guarantee it because when you shut off a frost proof, the seat is actually way back here in the back. And if it's damaged, it's just gonna mess up the new washer. So our philosophy is we wanna go ahead and try and change it out, especially if it's an easy installation like this one. We keep a full line of frost proofs on our truck. The reason being, we understand that different plumbers use different sizes. So we've got everything from four inch, eight inch, 10 inch, six inch, 12 inch, and I know this is a four, but this is really unique. This is a four that is a little bit longer. Luckily for me, we stock the extensions. So what I'll end up doing is putting on an extension and tightening it down that way It'll be about the same. By the time I get all this snugged up, it may stick out a little bit further, but remember this other one was right up against the brick. So if it sticks out a little bit, I can build a little bit of a lip behind it with the grout and we won't have any problem at all. 
And like I said, we keep multiple sizes and we keep extras of each size. We want the vans well stocked to make sure that if we do come here and they say, hey, by the way, while you're here, can you go ahead and do the one in the back? Or we can offer them that option. We've got everything that we need and in multiple sizes. So the first thing I wanna do is get Teflon tape on here. I'm using Monster so I don't need a lot, but I had a hydromechanical engineer teach me one time that he wanted Teflon tape and pipe dope. The funny thing is, from the time we started doing it, we didn't have any more leaks out at Texas Instruments. So I've been doing it ever since then. I have a lot of people tell me, you know, don't do that. But I'll tell you what, when I've got an engineer that wants it done his way, I do it his way. And the results were great, so I've kept on doing it. Now, sometimes Teflon tape can be a lot of fun with rubber gloves on, but to keep the pipe dope off my clothes, off my hands and everything else, I wear my gloves. And I don't want any leaks in the wall, so I want to make sure I do everything I can to get it filled off good where I don't have any problems. Now, those of y'all that saw my video about my tool bags and all the tools that plumbers carry, things like this are why you would want a second crescent wrench. Even though this is back on the wall, I always want my stuff to look really neat and clean. So we're gonna line it up on the female threads back there. Make sure we've got everything straight. As you see, this front flange is thicker on top. It's cause it helps it angle it down. When this is square, it puts a little bit of a fall on it. What that does, that makes sure that when you disconnect the hose, this has a vacuum breaker on it. This literally makes sure that all the water in here drains. Even though this is tilted down, if you leave a hose connected to it, it can hold water even with a vacuum breaker. So we always tell people, make sure you disconnect the hoses when you're done, especially in the winter times. If this ever freezes and breaks inside the wall, they're not gonna notice it till the next summer. Now that's really about as tight as I wanna go with it. I know it's tight enough that it's not gonna leak. I can build up mortar, grout, everything back here. I can also put a shim or something in just to give it a little bit of pitch. That way I know that line inside the wall is angled down so that it will not hold water. The last thing I want this line to do is hold water so it could freeze and break inside the wall. Now, one last thing that I wanna do, I wanna make sure that my screw on my handle is nice and tight. Everything feels good. And I'm gonna clean it up from where I set it down in the dirt. Now, I'm mixing up my mortar to patch this up. And I wanna mix it kind of thick because as you see, I'm leaving it out a little bit. But the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick a wedge in here because I wanna angle this down just a hair. So I'm gonna take a toilet wedge and put it in right here above it. Now, the hole's a little bit bigger than I thought. So I'm gonna stick two wedges in there. So now I've got them in a position. So the back side of this is level. It's got this angle down just enough that when we take the hose off, any water is gonna drain out of it and we're not gonna have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So this is almost like doing caulk on a tub or shower. You wanna get it in there, you wanna to try to work it in behind it as good as you can. You wanna smooth it out where everything looks really, really good. So luckily for us, luckily for the homeowner, this was a pretty easy install. It was threaded, there was a drop rear nail on the wall. It wasn't moving, this thing is pretty tight. I don't wanna move it around a lot because I want my mortars set up really, really well. But you saw, this is not the exact same size that came out. We made an adjustment, we had to put a little bit more mortar in it, but this was a very easy installation. If y'all have done anything different on your install, do me a favor, leave me a message down in the comments and let me know what you'd have done just a little bit differently. I like these. These are a good product that we're able to come in, get things taken care of, take care of our customers and save them money by saving them from wasting water. This is something that happens a lot here in Texas because people do leave hoses hooked up and they freeze and they break. 
Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think or if you'd have done anything different. Now remember, this video is sponsored by Ferguson. If you wanna order some frost proofs for your trucks or your vans, go to ferguson.com. You can get the exact same ones that we use here today. All right, come look at it. Tell me what you think. Ah. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.